the bro fest to you all. That's for you guys out there. I can't wait to do that at BreachCon. Just like over 200, 250 of you guys. It's going to be fucking awesome. As we come to the end of yet another week where the legacy was finished and done and out and got an amazing response. Because many consider it to be the best one yet. I imagine when it goes live, there'll be lots of anger. But that's all good, man. That's all good. Because it's another one in the bag and the next one it's on its way. As I look across this office... At the props that have already arrived for our next big video <laughs> to which andy can't wait to show off on stream and use as general props for day-to-day -day life which is great and fantastic we have another big week coming next week which is going to be neo the the big souls type game and also the dark souls 3 dlc we're going to be smashing through that and getting all that kind of stuff done so it's been pretty fucking awesome we played john wick vr today which was all right it was all right is that how we're feeling andy all right it's okay it's all right all right, and the wrestling game, which was uh, great for character customization. <laughs> Had tremendous character customization, which is pretty good. But we are, in fact, here for some drama time. Some drama time. And we're going to touch... I'm going to kick off with this story. I'm going to kick off with it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type the title, and I'm going to trust that my awesome live audience are going to behave themselves. Because I don't want you to get permabanned, but you will be permabanned if you uh, go down the wrong road. <laughs> Just be pre-warned. But we should cover these things because it's important. Importante. Hey, if it'll get me a couple of miles across town, Pledge, I'll take a shot in the mouth. <laughs> I'll take a shot in the mouth indeed. All right. So I'm going to cut over here now to my amazing Patreon bros. You all enjoyed our legacy video. And we are going to pick some names. Triggered. Triggered. Uh, Joshua, you wonderful man. Julio. <laughs> Max and Dale. This is one name. So, I, did you team up to do Patreon? That's really cool if you did. Uh, Max and... Is it Max and Dale or Max and Kale? Okay, good. Because I don't like... Uh, do you use double D? Or did you think about that? You don't use a double D. I like it. I wonder if it's Max and Ale. I'm going to go with Max and Dale. Max and Dale. I'm going to say it like that. And I need a girl. Where's my girls at? We've already used you, Christina. You, who's the next girly on our list? Where's my girls at? Oosh, 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 oosh. Oh, Chelsea. I'm going to assume, assume that is a lady name. Chelsea. Oh, so I need to point this out. Okay, so some people got confused. I think I did say this in the last drama. If I did, it's still important I need to say this. So, um... Like when we said that some people's names have been in the drama time, we were Patreons and they hadn't heard theirs. I got a lot of emails, but pretty much 99% of those emails from the, for the guys in the $1 tier. It's a higher up tier to get your name in drama purely so that we can eventually get back to using the live streamers names. That's all. Cause obviously we don't have much to give away in terms of like restricting Patreon content. We don't like doing that. So if that is the case, bear that in mind. Okay. Bear that in mind. The $1 guys get everything that we put out on Patreon. They get a hundred percent of things, but the drama name is the higher tier. So that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I want to bring you up. I don't like banging on about Patreon, but there you go. There you go. Rigged. <laughs> it's fucking rigged this. All right. I need a guild name, a guild name. That's a bastard. <laughs> I need a guild name. That's a bastard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A guild name that's a bastard. That's what we're after. That's what we're after. Oh my god. Hey Andy. Yes, mate. One of the Patreons is a fraudulent one. That's the first time I've seen that. How do you know? It's come up on here. This cat the this user's card has been flagged as fraudulent. Oh wow. bastard. Wow. Bastard. 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 Fraudulence. Fraudulence, sir. Fraudulent. Um <clears throat> The wank stains. The wank stains, beautiful. The wank stains, beautiful. The wank stains, beautiful. All right, okay. Are we ready? Are we ready? Hello, Breach, and a bro fist to you. And Ghosty, if he's there. Como estas? <laughs> Como esta? El guapo. El guapo? I'm from the land of cheesesteaks. Call it. Philadelphia. Correct, mate. Correct. And I have been playing WoW since mid-vanilla. Mid-vanilla. At the ripe young age of 14 and have mained a paladin ever since. Also because it is relevant to the story, I am African-American dash Puerto Rican. You Americans and your, 
you have your your ethnic labels man <laughs> your ethnic labels <laughs> you guys love it i don't know it's such an american thing to like break it down like that i should also mention that i used to be bullied as a lot as a child because of my large size now i'm going to presume that doesn't mean fat mate it just means that you was a goliath mate yeah you was a goliath massive and hard and because of this, my father put me into martial arts to defend myself and so that I could lose weight. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> I remember, though, when I was eight and in Elwyn Forest, questing, I saw local defense spam that Goldshire was under attack. It was then that I saw it. A large creature with a skull next to its name and no identifiable level. I thought this had to be a raid boss. So I went straight to defense chat and said that inv me to the raid to kill the raid boss. Throw me an inv, mate. I thought I was in. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> then someone sent a reply telling me that I was a fucking idiot. Oh. And that it was just a level 60 Tauren. Oh. <laughs> it's just a player. It's not a raid. No imps to the raid, mate, for the player. It didn't matter, though. I rushed up to him and began to stab him. Only for him to slash laugh at me and one shot me. But it was actually this experience which inspired me to be a raider. <laughs> I'm going to be a raider so eventually I can kill a Tauren. Yes. <laughs> and I have been ever since. I later formed a guild that went on to raid. We got Blackwing Lair, Molten Core, Zulgarub, and only ever faltered on Nax Ramis. Because it gave us a lot of trouble and a lot of guild members left in annoyance joining other guilds. I was not troubled by this though. And it only fueled me to become a better raider. Oftentimes, looking up my class, crunching the numbers, and working hard to better myself as a paladin. Flash of light doesn't need that much research, bro. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. Unfortunately, I had to stop raiding during the Burning Crusade to study and look into good colleges. But I had my chance to raid again in mid Wrath of the Lich King during the release of Ulduar. I got pulled through some Nax raids for gear by a real life friend of mine and managed to join a guild that was looking for a rep paladin. By the name of the Wankstains. I messaged the guild leader. Joshua. Who was recruiting at the time. And after a trial run through Ulduar. I was given a slot in the team. Preacher I was so excited. I was very pleased that most of the guild were all close to the age of me. Around 17 to 19. But I shortly learned after joining Vent. That they were actually much, much younger. And very, very immature. A lot of them sounded like they hadn't hit puberty yet. And their voices were really fucking annoying. Two of them in particular, Julio and Maxendale, were by far the worst. And this was further, and I want everybody to try and use this in normal conversation over the weekend... This was further irksome. <laughs> it was irksome because every other word out of their mouth was profanity. I can't imagine what that would be like. <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> what horrible bastards. No, horrible plebs. Horrible plebs. Oh, Jesus Christ. I am, by no, I am by no means shy when it comes to some profanity. But this got really, really old after a while. And of course, their favourite words to use was the hard end. The hard end. Preacher, they used the hard end like they were modern day ice cubes. <laughs> Wrapping their way through life. And I was tempted to leave right there and then. But, they were up to Mimiron. So... <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do right you walk in there's some solid racism being dropped but but they are up to mimiron this is irksome isn't it it is irksome it is irksome to say to say the least it's irksome 
So I thought I'd put up with it. Get geared by them. And then leave for a guild that wasn't, you know, irksome. So one night we formed the raid. And went right on in. Flame Leviathan downed. Ignis down. Razor Scale down. All fell with the first attempt and we were all excited to continue. All the while though, listening to the high-pitched bitch voices of them dropping the hard end every chance they could. We got all the way up to Thorum and decided to call the raid for the night and pick up again later that week. After the raid call, Julio and Max piped up and mentioned that everyone who hadn't should put their picture on the guild website. This needed to be done to further what they called Guild Unity. Guild Unity. We will replace the word with novel. I think that works. <laughs> the hard end is now going to be known as novel going forward. <clears throat> this was, of course, just their way to look at people and make fun of them. And although I didn't want to be a part of this, I did want to raid. So I thought about it. And later that night, I made the decision. A decision that I regret the most. I put up my picture on the guild forum. Edited my profile. And of course, the next day, the first message that I received from Huli was, I didn't know you were noble. I replied with, yeah, and Julio piped up in guild chat at how cool it was that they had a black guy in the guild and that it was awesome because he loved rap music and grape drink. <laughs> you've got to laugh, right? <laughs> you've, got, you've got to laugh. Oh, man, we've got a black guy in the guild. That is awesome because I, too, love rap music and grape. And it actually says grape drank, D-R-A-N-K. <laughs> you, know I mean? you can't even make it up if i was trying to write this i couldn't make this up i just could not make it up oh sweet jesus represent him i almost lost my fucking shit but i managed to calm down and reply with a simple lol of course as time they went to even greater heights to use as many racist words and slangs invent as they could since they now openly said it was okay because we all have a black friend. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. I have a black friend. <laughs> I can say whatever I want now. It's the past. It's the past. It's the past. It's the past. <clears throat> After one raid night through this, I messaged Joshua about it and told him that it was really inappropriate and that I was becoming really angry about it. Now, not eager to lose one of his top DPS, Joshua told me that this was normal behavior by them and to ignore it because they were his real life friends. And despite their words, despite their words, they were very happy with me in the guild and loved how friendly I was and helpful. Yeah. It's okay because I know them IRL. All right? So... There you go. I'm not, I'm not sure what else you want me to tell you. I'm not sure what else you want me to say. Do you feel better now? And by the way, I don't know <laughs> what to say. I'll be honest with you, preacher. My 19-year-old ego took a boost from knowing that they liked having me in the guild. Dude. What? <laughs> oh, fuck. What? What? I calmed down and left vent to go and do my dailies in relative peace, thanks to hiding guild chat from my chat bar. The next week, the next fucking week, during our attempts at General Vezax, Julio and Max went into a long discussion about cocks and balls. It's a great detail in vent chat when Chelsea, Chelsea, who was Joshua's girlfriend, got disgusted by how far it went. It's true. It's true. It's true. You shouldn't talk about cock and balls in the open forum. It's not right. Keep that quiet, lads. Don't do that. Wait for it. She got very disgusted by it and left the channel. 
Julio and Max, of course, discussed how women needed to stay in the kitchen and make sandwiches for them because the big boys were raiding. I, is this you? What? <laughs> I expected Joshua to put them both in their places. It was his girlfriend, after all. But no, Joshua actually joined in and even brought her back into the channel and asked her to go and make him a sandwich. Are we good? Are we good? Do we know where we're at? I'll talk about cocks all day long, says Lily. <laughs> but racism? No, thank you. I lost my fucking temper. I could take all the abuse they dealt to me, but seeing someone else being picked on really got to me. And with all the hatred I had in my heart, I said, Shut the fuck up, you dickless ass lickers. Vent went quiet. We killed Hoda in silence. <clears throat> now, you guys have been pretty good so far. White Knight, Jack, you're so cold. Try and hold your shit. Vent went dead silent. We killed Holder in silence. It was all quiet until we got to looting. And Joshua piped up in Vent. I'm not going to give you the tear chest because it's not black like you. I don't know where we go from here. <laughs> I don't know where. We're in a place where you just, you just don't know... <laughs> was he sitting on that was he thinking about it was it like was he like i've got him here or like where, where do we go from here right where do we go from here i don't know this is where this is where we're at he was like was he holding on to this line did he think of it on the spot i don't know i was speechless as am i because it's just like, it's so ridiculous that you're like, what? What the fuck? I had already lost my temper once. I told myself I wasn't going to do it again. I didn't say a word. The raid was called. After looting with no further incident, I logged off vent. I was about to log off when Chelsea sent me a whisper. Girls, you're about to lose your minds. Girls... And I, you see this happen all the time in the real world. Here we go. When Chelsea sent me whisp whisper, apologizing for Joshua's behavior. And saying he really didn't mean it. And that she thinks he was only doing it to try and impress Max and Julio. <laughs> I calmed down during our discussion. We are grouped up in the past to run a few random dailies. He's got to defend a boy, right? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> she was actually a very nice girl. And I asked her, of course. Let's, let's, let's move into the friend zone now. Why are you with someone who's such an ass? I thought it would make her mad. It was so cliche. But she agreed and said it was because they had been friends for so long. And their families both knew each other. They weren't far away. It clicked. An idea popped into my head. We had a really nice conversation that night. And I will honestly say, chat, that I am not vindictive at all. But I could not pass this opportunity that clearly presented itself. I told her that maybe we should all meet up. In person. She agreed. This should be a great idea. We could all maybe have dinner or have fun, she said with a winky smiley face. She's game. He's game. <laughs> game on. <laughs> game on. Game on. Uh, now you probably know why I chose this story. Because it didn't end. And um, this is going to sound really planned, but it's not. On a dark ending. <laughs> I knew what I was going to do. She knew what I was going to do to her. <clears throat> I didn't intend to fight. I just wanted to, you know, hurt him in the only other way a man could. I told a friend of mine what was going to go down and asked him to log my character while I was there to fill the guild chat with the most vile and foul language uh, about jo about Joshua that he could. Because Joshua is the kind of guy 
who would get the text when any drama was kicking off and have to log in to deal with it. I also knew only he could remove people from the guild because he found everyone else too immature to do so. I drove up to the town where Chelsea and Joshua lived, went to their apartment. She invited me in and we sat saying we were going to wait for Joshua. But then she told me that he didn't know I was coming because it was supposed to be a pleasant surprise. Now, I do not have a huge ego, Preacher, <clears throat> but I am not an ugly guy. We put the moves on. She reciprocated. I knew it was about to go down, so I texted my friend, told him to do it now. Now, this isn't in the story, right? <clears throat> but I know that you sent that message while having a horse bath. <laughs> Andy, are you reading that? <laughs> you know it. I know it. It's classic. It's, science. it's classic. It's classic. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. Shit. <laughs> we gotta go to the bathroom. <clears throat> then I made my move. We kissed after a little bit of foreplay. We went at it. I banged this girl like it was my last day alive. Every time she says she was done, I refused to allow it. I kept going. I wanted to be going at it when he got home. And I kid you not, it, it, what happened next made me feel, feel both horrible and happy at the same time. He came in. I pulled out and stood up and looked at Joshua. His eyes were wet and red with tears. He ran out of the apartment and cried outside the door while Chelsea went to the bathroom to clean up. I didn't care. He had allowed two of his real life friends to insult me for weeks and even had done so himself. I put my clothes on and left the apartment. Looking at Joshua still there crying. Chelsea <clears throat> never said a word. Once I got home, I texted him. And they need to come over here and say this. Andy, Stop it. I need you to come and say this. I'll come in. I'm coming right now. Once I got home, I sent him one text message. Were we highlighted? Oh, shit. Once you go black. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> On the table, mate. Zip down. <laughs> I had at least expected him to try and hit me, but he didn't. I left without further incident and went home and logged on to WoW to find that I no longer had a guild. I even received a long in-game mail, that's regulation, from Joshua, saying that I had ruined his life. And for that, he was going to ruin my raiding career. Sounds about square. I didn't care. I got my revenge. I ended up leaving that server and joining a casual, friendly raiding guild where I've been with them ever since. I'm very happy where I am. I want to thank you for reading my story and hope that it won't burn too hard for being that vindictive of a person. I don't know. I'm going to leave it to the chat to decide. I'm going to leave it to the chat to decide. I'm going to leave it to the chat to decide on that one. <laughs> I'm going to leave that completely up to you guys to decide whether we're good. But he does have a permanent copy, which is science and fantastic all at the same time. Justice. Oh, he cried though. He just wanted to be accepted by Julio and Max. He just wanted to be accepted. To be fair, they thought it was fine because they had a black friend. So you can say whatever you want now. Just open the door and in you go. <laughs> All done. Right. <clears throat> Oliver, my man. Bearded. Uh, Clapham. We've got two girls in this one. <laughs> I'm not sure if that, uh... <laughs> if somebody is described as a cook crush, boy or a girl? What do you think? What do you think? Very open to it too. Yeah, it's open to it. We'll go with Jesse, which can be used in either way. Where's my girls at? Alzira. Fella, girl. Yeah, it's a mixed bag there. It is a mixed bag. Uh, Emma's giving me this list of people. But she's not put it in gender order. Probably because she didn't want to guess. I have to be saddled with this burden. Of trying to guess. One more girly. Oh, Daria. Yeah. Oh, how do I see your surname? I'm not going to say it on stream. Is that Russian? Sexy surname. Confirmed. Nailed it. Right then. <clears throat> Either way, it's a priest. <laughs> all right, all right. Are you ready? Assuming priest. <laughs> oh, Noble's here. It's a good job you joined at exactly the right time, Noble. 
perfect perfect i do i have to assume gender i do i have to assume gender i'm sorry all right then <clears throat> good afternoon preacher and his lordship ghosty good tired homes be he present and crisp as usual I'm writing to you from down in the Midlands, from a town just outside of London. Indeed, I am a southern fairy. It's okay. It's all right. We'll let it slide. We'll let it slide. <clears throat> I discovered your channel around five months ago, spending the first two of those months binge-watching every drama time you have, relating to an alarmingly large amount of these stories, some of them leaving me thinking, is this about me? I finally decided to write my own. I'd like to share with you... <clears throat> Ghostmeister and the chat. Are you ready? South of Midlands, he said. From down in... It does say down in the Midlands. You are correct. It says down in the Midlands, outside London. Suspect. I feel like I should start off with this little bit of backstory. I am now at the ripe age of 20, and I've been literally raised on Blizzard games. My first game being Warcraft 2 back in 98. Blizzard is a household name for my family. When my parents both got WoW... On the day of EU release, I was immediately hooked. <clears throat> My parents went on to be server first raiders. <laughs> My mother healing on a holy priest. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad playing an enhancement shaman, long limbed of wind fury weapon. They came second in an Axe 40 race on our realm. I at the mere age of nine at this time. Even didn't even cap my plebe Tauren Druid that I played when my mother was off the computer until the Burning Crusade released. <laughs> you share an account with your mum? <laughs> Cooked, man. <laughs> Cooked at such a young age. Cooked at some sort of gauge. You need to understand, Preacher. I was shit at this game. Shit, I say. I would run around meleeing things to death with a skinning knife. As a druid. Putting talents randomly in different trees, not even committing to a spec. And when Wrath released, my parents finally saw fit to help me out. Sending me down the route of a kitty feral druid. I enjoyed it for the most part, but my inner prepubescent ace got a shank. <laughs> but my inner prepubescent edgelord came out when they finally let me have my own account. And I went straight after the DK, after power leveling a hunter to 55. It was around this time that I met my best friend, Oliver. He went to the same school as me. And growing up as the creepy World of Warcraft nerd, just like me, we got on really, really well. So let's go forward a few years. A few months. Cataclysm. Dragon Soul Alifar and Heroic Pugs Galore. Oliver and I had been hopping from Cesspool Guild. Aw, his parents won't even let him be in the same guild because he's a fucking noob. <laughs> <laughs> his parents are like you go over there sorry you're not good enough to be in our guild wrecked wrecked mum doesn't even want you near the pc i love it <clears throat> oliver and i have been hopping from cesspool guild to cesspool guild for months that was until one day i stumbled across a guild in trade chat that seemed like they were a bit more serious than the cash flow gold mines that were the 800 plus member guilds that we were used to after scouting ahead for a few days, I convinced Oliver to join. It was about this time that we met Jessie. She was an officer in this guild. We immediately clicked. We did a lot of content together while waiting for Mop to launch. Play other games outside of WoW. She was a few years older than me and her boyfriend was also in the guild. He didn't seem to mind the amount of time we were spending together. And the three of us would regularly Skype while playing. A few months after Mop launched, the guild disbanded due to drama. And Jessie... And her boyfriend went off the grid. It made me really sad as I miss Jessie a lot. I imagine by now that you and your chat have inferred that I did in fact have an enormous, ridiculous love crush on Jessie. Aww. 
No, he loves her. No, no, he's not a cook, Chunky Ninja. No, <laughs> you guys are jumping to conclusions. You guys are jumping to conclusions. No, 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 no. It's just a lot of one-sided love, <laughs> which is fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> fast forward a few months, and most of my remaining guild members had left the game. I'd all but unsubbed myself, playing mostly League of Legends, mate, as Mop wasn't really doing it for me. That was until one day, after nearly five months of silence, I got a PM on League of Legends, mate. And that PM was from Jesse. I practically jumped to joy. It turns out that she'd missed me as much as I'd missed her. <laughs> when one person doesn't speak to you for five months, they haven't missed you that much. I'm just saying. <laughs> just, just gonna throw it out there. Just gonna throw it out there. <clears throat> And her boyfriend had been apparently been very manipulative. That's the way it went down. No. No. That's the way it went down. That's the way it went down. <clears throat> She'd left him and wanted to get in contact. Back in contact with her old friends and myself. Of course we welcomed her with open arms. And this did not turn out well. Several months went by and gradually people started coming back to the game. Jesse and I started our own guild with her as GM and me as co-GM. Now you can use the signal. <laughs> Shine the cook signal in the sky. <laughs> you could be co-GM. My feelings for her seem to grow by the day. No, no, no. And I'm pretty sure she knew, yet she never said anything. I convinced a few of her friends to get back into the game. And before we knew it, we even had a raid team going. Raiding some 10-man normal Siege of Orgrimmar. I was tanking on my recently created warrior. Oliver was my partner and his guardian druid. And Jesse was DPSing as a hunter. <laughs> oh, subs, man. What are you doing? I'm so proud of this chat. I'm so proud. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jesse began to get close to one of the warlocks in the guild. A friend I had convinced to reactivate his sub and join us. And within a few months of talking, they were dating. I was so jealous of him. But it wasn't to last. It wasn't to last. They broke up after dating for about five months. As guild couple. After getting ahead of the curve garage hell scream... Netting our wolf mounts, most of us went casual and played some league in our main, as our main game. It is around this time that Jesse introduced me to another friend of hers called Bearded. The Beer Bearded. Beer Bearded was very, very good at League of Legends. <laughs> Fucking hell. <sighs> that blitz crank though. <clears throat> and he didn't give a shit about WoW. So cool. You could tell right away that Jesse had a thing for him. But he didn't give a shit. <laughs> he didn't give a shit. <laughs> Bit bit, it came to become one of my closest friends. He was smart, funny, good at games. Always the life of the bants in the Skype. You know the type. He had a degree in psychology, detected almost immediately that I had a thing for Jesse, and even gave me a few tips on how to confess my feelings. What a bro! No, 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 Beer Beard, it's a bro, man. He knows what's up. He can see the boner. He can see the boner. He's going to open the door. He's going to slide it in real nice. He's going to slide it in. I took a trip to Norway to visit some friends out there and I began to plan. I thought about every detail about how I was finally going to tell Jesse how I felt about her. I thought about the different conversations we might have, what replies she might give, and what reply I would give to that reply, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> what the? This is the shit that drives people crazy. You go mad thinking about this stuff. Oh my god. <clears throat> He's still a bro though. About halfway through my holiday, I got a text from Beer Bearded. Jesse and I are dating. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to feel betrayed. <laughs> Aim the cook missile. Fire. Even <laughs> uh, right.
writing these words in the story now makes me angry. Not a week before he told me that he wasn't even remotely interested in her. I had told him how much work I had put into this relationship. And he swooped in. I came back from my holiday and things were noticeably awkward between the three of us. Clearly by now, he'd told her how much I loved her. So she was really uncomfortable whenever I was around. Oh my god. <laughs> Super cook. Super cook. A few months went by and everyone, including Oliver, stopped talking to me. I had become the weirdo of the group. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I feels bad, man. <laughs> he was in love. He was in deep, deep love. Anyway, I thought to myself, fuck them. And logged on to WoW and got to work. I went full hardcore, playing minimum 12 hours of WoW a day while holding down a full-time job somehow. Not sleeping. Can, you can do that pretty easily. I joined a new server, new guild, and finally decided I was going to learn to play properly. I got into a nice new clique of friends, one of which taught me how to raid properly. You see, prior to this, the only raid I'd done while it was current is Siege of Ogrimmar, normal. By this point, we were more than halfway through Wad, and Hellfire Citadel was being sieged by countless loot whores across Azeroth. The guy that taught me to finally play WoW correctly set me up with some key binds. We Corers. He even bought me some food and flask. Boosted me to, to get some starter gear. This guy was one of the best wild players I've ever seen. Apparently he once turned down a spot to be in Method. Because he wanted to play with friends. Come at me. Come at me chat. Don't even know. I didn't get to do much HFC though. Due to me joining the raid life. <coughs> the raid life late. But after popping between a few guilds. During the tail end of HFC. I stumbled across a nice little mythic progression guild. Who had HFC heroic on farm. And by farming her HFC heroic. I climbed to rank 6 deeps. To date one of my prouder achievements. I got on nicely with the final guild I settled with. And it was here that I met. Alzira and Clapham. Alzira and Clapham are the couple. They're a couple. And I became very close with them when settling down into this new guild. I met them IRL within the first month of meeting them in the game. These two became the best couple. And I... <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> and with them and a few others, we left our guild to start our own. With the intention of raiding in Legion. And unlike most scenarios that end with that sentence, we were pretty successful. In just two months of farming, we had a stable raiding team, ready to tackle the Emerald Nightmare when it released. I was, and still am, DPSing as a big dick arms warrior, and I loved the game. Things were going so well. We were downing bosses left and right and centre. Unfortunately, we didn't make it to Mythic, as we could never get 20 players online. But we had Heroic easily on farm. Shortly after the Trials of Valor released, another girl by the name of Daria joined our guild. And we hit it off immediately. Everyone in the guild pushed us. We spoke every day. And this time, rather than be a cook, <laughs> I'm glad you said it yourself. <laughs> rather than be a cook, <laughs> I made my intentions clear from day fucking one. With the help, with the help of Clapham, and some thinking, <clears throat> we became, and still are today, boyfriend-girlfriend. We see each other every week as she lives up north, yet near yourselves, and ghosty. Where? Where does she live? <laughs> Is Discord? Oh, I fucking hate Discord, man. Recently, it's really been pissing me off. I can't even see it. It's not even in my taskbar. Can you guys hear things on Discord? There we go. Go away. It's a great app, but Jesus Christ, does it do some stupid things. Yeah, where is she? <laughs> where is she? <laughs> where she live? Just checking, just checking. <clears throat> and I'm the happiest I've been for years, and it's all due to this beautiful game that is World of Warcraft. <laughs> to give an update, though, to give an update on everyone else, Oliver is currently was it Oliver? Yeah, Oliver is currently in the top 100 bounce druids in the world. His guild was in the Gul'dan Mythic race, but they lost. 
I haven't heard from Jesse or Bearded for months, but I understand they play WoW together after Jesse made him play the game. Clapham and Alzira I still speak to every single day, but not as close with them as previous due to the guild dying midway through 715. And Daria and myself are looking for a place to live together. We are as happy as ever. <laughs> Jack just walks in with like you got cooked so hard. <laughs> oh, it felt bad, man. It did feel bad. Oh, it did feel bad. All right, we're gonna finish up today with some Jesse's bants. She's 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 the girl. Let's have some pug tails for you guys. Some wonderful pug tails. Pug tails. Right, these are little short stories. We're gonna have to do the voice. I'm gonna have to do the voice. I can't believe you considered, like, every conversation you could have had with that girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. <clears throat> Alright, I'm bringing him in. I'm bringing him in for this one. I'm bringing him in. Alright. <clears throat> I'm bringing him in. Pug Tales! Yeah, we're going into the pug world. Alright, you ready? <clears throat> Alright! Hello, Preacher and Ghosty! Bonjour! I'm writing to you from the US of A, all the way in Oregon. Oregon, just north of California. I'm writing to you about some experience that I've had while living the pug life dream after you did it in your recent series. Why? I wasn't trying to inspire people. <laughs> Don't do that. I wasn't trying to inspire you guys to go into the pug world like I'm all over this. <laughs> I'm all over this. Oh yeah, Preacher did it. I'm going in. Right, you lead three names total. All right, cool. Spice Weasel and my man Fastlocks. Yeah. Oh, I didn't pick it up. Fucking wireless man. I'm getting cooked by a keyboard. <laughs> Come Shocker. on, key. Maybe the batteries are dying. Oh my god! Please go that way. Space dash. Yeah. Bish fucking bosh. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Each story only really involves me and one other person, so we'll need three names in total. The Dia, <laughs> the first little story of us. <laughs> hey, it's, look at this thing. This is what we use. <laughs> like this little. Look how thin it is. It's like a proper thin dick. Like, uh, okay. The Ad Diablo event with Augers. Back during the Diablo event, I was leveling my Windwalker Monk through some dungeons while questing. I'm fortunate enough, fortunate enough to have bought a few 830 items, level 101. So mobs died pretty quickly. While I get into a normal Violet Hold... A normal Violet Hold... Which was fine, since I grabbed the quest for it beforehand. Group was running smoothly. No issues after the first few pulls. Another Windwalker monk by the name of Augus was in the group. Suddenly piped up. None of you motherfuckers better attack the treasure goblin until we're all ready though, mate. It was so out of the blue and he used caps lock. To that I replied, since everyone else was quiet on the matter... No worries, we're going to do the goblin. But he responded straight away. You are probably some retard who's going to attack the goblin as soon as he spawns though and fuck everybody over. To which I then reply. No, I'll just wait for everyone else. It's not hard to kill the goblin. <laughs> he then went on to say you are shit with your crappy DPS though. I can tell you is a retard. I should point out at this point that he was behind the tank in damage. The first boss rolls around. I don't remember what the boss was. Everything was fine until we get to the frost dragon boss. Mm. 
As soon as he saw it was the Frost Dragon boss, he piped up in his true August nature. You shitheads better climb the goddamn stairs and don't get hit by the dragon's breath, though. I'm just saying, you fucking shitheads. I didn't even bother replying this time, and we do the fight. And after the boss fight, though, the healer links the damage done. It was me. It was the other DPS. It was the tank. It was the healer. Then it was August. <laughs> August did not like this. I got hit by the fucking tail loads of times. That's why I didn't do more damage, though. Mate. Mate, the fucking tail, though. Bad tank. Bad tank. Bad you. Bad tank. Looking at his skills that he used during the fight, I said to him, do you know Fist of Fury is a good spell? And he comes back with, mate, I've been using it on cooldown. You are a noob, though. You are a noob. You noob. Which was pretty weird, since according to my scatter, he hadn't used it once. I bring it up to him, asking if he needs help with his rotation or anything. <laughs> so he replies to me, though. It's PvE, mate. All I do is PvP, and I'll kick your PvE ass in a duel any day, mate. Any day. Don't even use fucking Fist of Fury in PvE. Fucking pussy. Since the dungeon is over at this point, anyway. I expect him as he has no PvP achievements other than really entering BGs. So I asked him about it since I got 2.2k in freeze though. He comes back with, I had 2.7k arena in like BC, right? But that was like before the achievements and that, bro. So I haven't got it now. I haven't got it now. But in like the Burning Crusade, mate, I was gladiator like four times. Yeah. So that's why. But it's like before achievements and that. I linked in my achievement just to annoy him. He says, I don't give a fuck about achievements. You have no life, man. Not a bit of it, you fucking nerd. You fucking nerd. So he stayed in the same group, and I'll say, let's have a duel then in Dalaran. August put me on ignore and logged out. By the way, we did kill the treasure goblin, but he didn't get to do it. Oh, no. No, poor August. Can we say a prayer for August? <laughs> say a prayer for August. <laughs> say a prayer for August. August is a good man. He's a good man. He doesn't deserve this. Classic August. <laughs> right then. We're now going to move on to our next pug tail. <laughs> it's a gladiator though, mate. Real talk. <clears throat> We're two healing normal dark heart thicket next. We're two healing normal dark heart thicket. Are you ready? My next little tale is about this great combo that me and my brother got while in a quick random while leveling our ults. I was playing on my demon hunter tank, and my brother was on his shadow priest. When we get to the area where you can skip some trash by going through the little hole or jumping over, the priest pulls everything possible in the area. No big deal, because it's just a normal dungeon, but I notice our DPS is pretty shit at this point, and these mobs take a really long time to burn down. So I check the logs. I see that my brother and I are way ahead, and there's one other guy on the meters who's doing okay. I inspect the 110 druid in our group, who's queued as damage, and I ask him why he's resto spec. To this, the holy priest Spice Weasel chimes in and says, He's here to carry us through the dungeon so it goes smoothly. At this point, the only response I have is, What? <laughs> What? <laughs> he responds with, if he wasn't here, we would have well wiped on that big pull, though. Well wiped. I told him that those mobs are avoidable, and maybe you should just follow us next time. To which he replies with, I wanted more XP. That's why I pulled all those extra mobs. So I say we could just finish the dungeon quickly. It's much better XP than farming trash in a dungeon. But the priest knows what's going on. We have this druid. He's carrying us. So the whole run's going to go quickly. While we kill trash. At this point. I don't really give a shit. And just face the fact. That we're going to be doing dark heart normal. With two healers. While one of them is level 110. By the time we got to the giant tree boss. <coughs> Spice Weasel chimes in. Man. This run is going so smooth. I'm so glad we've got a carry in here, though. Right? 
I'm so glad we brought a carry because can you imagine what Dark Heart Normal would be like without a carry? Fucking terrible. <laughs> I ask you. That's great, but can you can you like cast Smite or the Druid cast some Wrath? I can run this without heals pretty easily, and you guys are just kind of standing around. <laughs> so when we were fighting the boss. I got our carry and Spice Weasel to actually cast a few damaging spells. But on the next boss, they stopped doing any damage. And said they were preparing for when we might take some damage. I really did feel bad for Spice Weasel as he seemed utterly convinced that this druid was here saving his life. I didn't bother talking with them anymore. It was the longest Dark Heart normal I'd ever been in. No! <laughs> we all need to carry a Dark Heart novel! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even, I, you know what bothers me it does bother me that neither of them were actually doing damage until that point like they were both just healing the tank and 2 DPS they were just stood there healing those guys that's what was going down alright <clears throat> let's move on <laughs> let's move on to fast locks in a mythic plus 2 dark heart thicket here comes fast locks <laughs> when that damage happens, it goes so fast. It's so fast, you need two people on the button. Here we go. Fast locks in Mythic plus two. You ready? My final little story to you, Preacher, is about a shaman healer I had in Mythic plus two, Dark Heart Thicket. I started the group and picked 878 level people. Bruh. 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 Since I wanted this run to go quickly and move on to higher keys, you just triggered everybody here. <laughs> like, so triggered. <laughs> so triggered. So, so triggered. <clears throat> we all get to the instance, and I start pulling to get a feel of how the group's performance is. This was after watching your tanking videos. Good for some. I see we've got some nice cleave going on. And I can chain pull pretty easily. Hey, hey, I'm not mocking. I did a Nathendra Heroic Pug this week. 905 minimum item level. All loot reserved. All loot reserved. Worked well though, we cleared it. <clears throat> I see we got some nice cleave going on and I can chain pull easily. So I start pulling multiple packs at once. But I see that one of the DPS and the healer are constantly at low health. So not long after that. Fastlocks chimes in. Who is the healer? Mate, 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 mate. Can you stop chain pulling? I don't have the gear for this and you don't have the gear for this. So calm it the fuck down, right? So that I point out that I'm geared enough to not really need heals. And all of the damage being taken can be avoided. I slow down a little bit though. Why piss him off, right? It's a mythic plus two. I'm concerned about our healer. But I keep going fast enough to ensure that we get the three chest. By the time we've basically done with the dungeon, I check my Skada. And see that Fastlox has only used healing wave since the start of the dungeon. Has zero riptides or healing surges or any other healing spell. I asked him the basic. I was like, Fastlox, mate. Why aren't you using, like, even Healing Surge? Even though you've been completely full mana for the entire run. But Fastlox has got answers for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Healing Surge, mate, is a fucking shit spell. It costs more mana than Healing Wave and heals for the same amount. Honestly, only a retard would use that spell. Science, motherfuckers. Get scienced. So I say, yeah, but it goes twice as fast. And you have full mana. So we could have gone faster. But Fastlox responds with some fucking logic, mate. Healing Surge is fucking shit. So I don't even have the spell on my bar, mate. Right? Don't ask me any more questions. As you can probably tell, I've lost all hopes in Fastlox. But I inspect him to make sure that he's geared. And I didn't pick up someone new to the game. And I see this guy is all Warforged, Titanforged, PvP gear, mate. Which makes me stop and think. Has this guy been hardcasting only healing wave in all of the PvP that he's been doing? And I've got to be honest with you, Preacher. I keep thinking about it, even to this day. <laughs> 
Think about that chat. <laughs> Think about that chat. Is he out there? Is Fastlocks out there now? Is he in your BGs? Casting Healing Wave. Casting Healing Wave. That's the second time to read my story speech. I hope you can see that I just really want to help guys out when they're learning the game. <laughs> but unfortunately, some people get very, very defensive. Yes, they do. Uh, I've had Demo Warlocks without a pet pulling no damage. <laughs> Demo Warlocks without pets. Just, just fucking, just flat demon vault cast. Boosh. I got plenty more dramas I could share along the way, but sh uh, I played shortly after Vanilla launch. I'm 23 now with a job and two kids. So I'm basically limited to the pug life at this point. I feel that, buddy. But I watch your videos while I'm doing nothing at work. I'm typing this out now while in the office. Bored out of my mind. Hey, get your dick out in the office. Swing it. Swing it. Swing that dick. Yeah? Swing it. Helicopter dick. In the office. Good times, good times. And that brings us to the end of today's drama. I'm so proud of all of you for getting through that first drama story. <laughs> I'm so proud of all of you for getting through that first drama story. It's not, it wasn't easy. But we got there. We got there. We got there. I had to consider seriously whether we would do it. Are you trolling me? Emma? Emma? <laughs> all right we have a web show tomorrow you wonderful people all the bands to <laughs> you dickhead i thought they were trolling me you're wearing your peter pan shoes <laughs> all right <clears throat> all right we'll see you tomorrow at the web show all right be good <laughs> she used Spanish. see you later guys have a great weekend if you're not gonna be at the web show tomorrow do something wonderful with your weekend i'm not sure what we're doing what are we doing yeah. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> That's suppose. Bye, everybody. Say bye, Andy. Peace out, Holmes. Pretty good. I like it.